Holding on to a modest gain for stocks this morning, 33 points higher, 25,890 is where we are. Now look who's here. <laughs> he's laughing, I don't know why he's laughing. I'm going to give him a hard time. His name is David Stockman, former Reagan budget director and perpetual bear. Yeah. The crash is coming, the crash is coming, the crash is coming. I have a problem with this. Okay. I know your logic, I've heard all about yeah. it, but you keep on predicting the great crash is coming. If I'd have followed your advice, I would have been out of this market during one of the greatest bull runs in history. Well, that would have been true in the year 2000. It would have been true in the year 2008. We go through business cycles. We're in month 110 of this expansion. Last time we were at month 110 was April 2000. The unemployment rate was 3.8%. The job creation rate in the prior six months was 273,000 per month. This is what an economy looks like at the end of a business cycle when it's about ready to roll over into the next recession. That's where I think we are now. Not the rear view mirror, but looking forward. Three big forces that aren't good for the economy. Number one, the Fed is tightening like never before, Stuart. You gotta take account of the fact that the Fed has been off the deep end for eight years, pumping money like there's no tomorrow. Okay. But now, but wait a minute, now it's going to be shrinking its balance sheet, QT, by 600 billion a year for the first time in history. That's more in one year than the entire balance sheet of the Fed in 2000. That's number one. Number two, the Trump tariffs are going to hit the economy, uh, you know, with a gale force that will accelerate inflation, force the Fed to tighten even faster. And third, we're in the tenth year of a recovery, and Trump is raising the deficit to 1.2 trillion a year. That's crazy. Okay, no. I'm, I understand okay. the argument. Yes, I, I do see the yeah. logic. Okay, and you've laid it out very well. Okay, but I've heard it all before. And unless you can tell me when the crash comes, I'm not going to take any notice of you. I'm sorry, okay. I'm just not. Okay, but I'm not in the forecasting business. I am actually a political and economic philosopher. I believe in sound money. I believe okay. in fiscal uh, look, magnitude. Look, there's a forecast you built only, into your analysis. So of course is, there is. Because, the crash is because, coming. So tell me when. Uh, I have no idea when, but I would say we're in the final days when you look at the firestorm that's coming down the okay, road. Okay, and listen okay. Listen to me for a second. Okay. I've done very do, well. Do you think you can? I know you've done well, but the point is you can have a bubble that extends for seven, eight, or nine years. The last three have, and then they end in tears. You know, the last time the NFIB, wait a minute, you, you mentioned it this morning, 107 all time high. No. In April 2000, uh, 2005, it was also at 107. The stock market then was at 1,200, okay, okay. and it took five years okay. to uh, get back there. I, I understand it. I There's hear the cycles. logic. I, Stuart, wait, wait, just yeah. wait a minute. Okay, all right. Let's suppose I agree with you that this bubble is going to end in tears, and I want to get out. Now, I mean, I just got to get out. Suppose I did that, and I sold all my Microsoft. I've made a lot of money in Microsoft. I sell it. I sell everything I've got. What do I buy? What you do is you put it in cash and you wait for the correction and then you buy low and then you ride the next cycle because okay. that's the way the economy so works. All cash. David Stockman says all cash. It would cash. be a good idea That means right my now. bank account, my checking account. <laughs> yeah, it Stick it all in there. Or buy some treasuries. They're now yielding 2.8%. Mm. The two years yielding 2.8%. All the while people were buying stock, the yield was zero. We are normalizing rapidly, okay, okay. and money is going to move. So David Stockman says the crash is coming. Go to all cash or treasuries. Be absolutely liquid so that when the crash comes, you buy cheap on the you, other you side. Swoop in Will you to still not tell me when the crash comes? Uh, it's impossible to predict because we're in uncharted waters. No one, the Fed has never kept interest rates in negative terms, in real terms after inflation, for eight years running. It's never happened. This is a giant uh, academic experiment that can't end well because money can't be uh, at zero or negative cost for eight years. You've done well. You're, I don't know. How, yeah, I don't know what you're worth. I'm not going to ask you. I don't care. Yeah. But you've done well. You're not poor. Right. What have you done with your money for the last ten years? Um, I've kept it basically in cash. 
And, so you uh, missed the market rally. Yeah, and the other, well, okay, in March uh, 27, 2000, the NASDAQ 100 was at 47. Wait a minute. I know all these numbers. No, wait a minute, Stuart, Stuart, you have to hear this. Your, your viewers should hear this. At, at that last bubble, March 27, 2000, 4,700 on the NASDAQ to, uh, 100. 13 trading days later, it was at 3,200. 33% vaporized in 13 days. People didn't know what hit them. Two years later, it was at 800. They lost 83% of their position. When you get to the top of the bubble, prudence says take your winnings, put them in the bank, and wait for the next go-around because we have an unsound monetary system. We have Keynesians that you dislike, that I dislike, running the central bank, thinking that they can control the whole economy by manipulating interest yeah. rates and fueling uh, stock market, uh, you, you know, see, wealth do effects. Do you see what you did, David? What? You know, when you started this interview, literally three and a half, <laughs> four minutes ago, yeah. the Dow Jones average was up 15 points. Yes. You told them, everybody, get out of stocks. <laughs>